Hopefully I'm now running live. Let's just see if I've got anybody coming on and then we can get going. Whilst, whilst I'm just waiting, there we go. Okay, let me just get this up so I can try and see some of the comments. Um, but last week I really struggled to see some of the comments in the middle. So hopefully this time it will work out. A bit better. I can't see myself at all now. Ooh, where am I? Um, okay. So what I'm going to say this time is, uh, if I'm missing your comments or I'm not not replying to them, it's, it's quite hard to look there and there at the same time. So either keep posting them and I'll catch them. Don't worry about seeming like you're pushy. I'll catch them. Hi, Sha Sharon. Yeah, I'm just seeing them there and there. Um, but if you've got questions, just keep asking them or just wait till the end and I'll have a look at all the questions and then everyone can um, post them all at the same time. That way I'm more likely to see them. Yeah, if in doubt or if you're watching on replay, which I figured out you can do, I didn't know they stayed there, um, then keep asking questions and I'll just keep coming and having a look. Hi Lorraine. Um, so yeah, just in case I don't see them because in the middle I'm really struggling to see and I'm, I'm not seeing a way of looking back at them. So um, that's just about the questions. Okay, I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes and try and sort myself out a little bit. Um, Easter Sunday, so I've been lazing around, so I'm a bit kind of behind myself. Um, just give it a couple of minutes to see who else is around. I'm trying to get the comments up on here now. Captions. Uh, um... Oh, look at that. It's it's Wow, it's creating subtitles. I didn't know it could do that. Um, I'm just trying to see the comments. And I've got none at all. I can see them on my... Um... I don't know how to get the comments up. All right, I'll start. I'll start working this, and then look at the comments afterwards. Maybe if I go into my, maybe if I go into my, um, let's try having a look. See on there. If not, I'll have to try and read them on the phone. But it's so hi, Natalie. Hi, Tracy. Oh, it's so nice catching up with you guys, all my students and friends. Um, I've got. No comments at all. I don't know why I can't see them. This is going to get curious then, isn't it? I'll have to come and look at them. Ah, there we go. Woohoo! Okay, I've got you now. Right, okay, cool. Hi, Jane. Hi, Karen. Hi, Deborah. All right. Hello, Heidi. Hi, Karen. Right. Um, good. I've got the comments there now. Fab. Now I feel like I know what I'm doing. I'm a bit low, aren't I? Look, I've got my head cut off. Um, I set the camera too low, so I'll have to hunch up. Okay. Um, should we do this? Right. This is what we're doing. How's everybody doing? Having a good Easter Sunday? There, look. There's our horse. And then, um, exactly, I'll talk as if you've all watched last week's. So if you haven't, then um, keep asking questions and I'll keep trying to update. But let's let's go with that. So there's our horse. So first up, like normal, there's our horse. I wanted to scale him up. So um, this time, again, in the computer, I scaled him up and then I just printed him out on four bits of A4 paper so we can sort of get a, a better idea of where we're going to here. Okay, see him? Right, with these structures, the very basic idea is you've got to work against gravity. So with something like this, where's the cake going to fall if you don't support it? The felt obvious one, and I'll draw it and then show you, is here. Can you see that line there? I'm drawing it here. If you don't put a support there, all that cake up there is going to fall down. Okay, so that's how we know where our first board's got to be. It's got to support there. Where else is going to fall if we don't support it? It's reasonably obvious. So let's just get that out of the way. It's going to be here, isn't it? Oh, go across like that. There. So now we need a support to support his head, otherwise his head's going to fall off. And we need a support to support the this baseline here, otherwise that's going to fall off. Now, given that we can't just have imaginary bits of wood, we're going to have to put something through the middle. And that's where our main line is going to go. So our main line is going to go from here all the way up there. And that double-sided tape. There. See it? So your main support is going to go through the middle, and then you're going to have a support at the bottom. And a support under his neck. Support under his neck and a support under his head. And your main line is through the middle. Right? 
not too complicated. And then can you see I've drawn the line up because I quite like using my rod to help support anything that's above that line. If I cut my rod to there, then I have to start thinking about supporting up here. But actually, if I just let my rod a little bit higher, it acts as a support for the head. Hi, Paula. How are you doing? Um, yeah, so that's why I let that rub. So if you sit behind, put him behind there, it's not exact because um, I printed out after I made the structure because that's how it works. But for you guys, make your print out first. It's helpful. Um, I'm trying to teach you how you should do it rather than me, how I do it, which is just cutting corners all over the place. So there we go. So there's that. So that's our structure. Hopefully that makes sense. You're looking at, with your structures, you're always looking at where the cake is going to fall apart if you don't structure it. And then you're going to put boards and structures in there so it doesn't fall apart. Right. So, with this one, I think we're going to get a thunderstorm. Just it's my out, out, outdoors then, it's just rumbled at me. Um, I'm going to go for straight 10 mil rod. The reason why I'm going to go for 10 mil rod is I don't have to bend it. It's just there. So I'm going to go for the biggest, strongest possible rod I can to support all my cake. As soon as you start bending rods, that's when I start sort of trading off bend time. Hi Denise, happy Easter to you. <laughs> oh, it's all my, all my students, bless you all. Oh. Um, sorry, back at, back, back at the track. Um, always use the thickest rod. If you don't have to bend it, it's dead easy. Um, I have cut this with my grinder. I talked about the grinder last week. Now, I've been having a conversation this week. Wait a second. Ugh. That's my grinder. I still love it. I still love the sparks. I still love it. Um, but I've been having a conversation with a very knowledgeable lady called Jane, and she says that I need a Dremel, which apparently is is, is much smaller and much safer. So uh, over the next couple of weeks, watch this space, because I'll get one, and then I'll cut with it and see how it goes. And maybe if it's slightly safer and slightly less likely to cut our hands off, we should use those. But in the meantime, I quite like this bad boy, and I'm, I'm getting quite used to him now. Um, and it makes me feel like I know what I'm doing. So there we go. So 10 mil rush. I cut it with a grinder, go straight through nice and easy. 10 mil rod, obviously needs 10 mil nuts and 10 mil washers. And to start with, all I've done is cut a board. This is 12 mil MDF like normal. Um, I do go up to 15 or 18 mil MDF, but only for bigger projects. Um, I don't think this really needs it. Uh, and also in lockdown, I'm kind of using what I've got around. So, um, and look, I've got my little feet on. And then underneath, can you see? You've got the bottom of your rod and you've got a nut and a washer and a matching nut and a washer. Now, I can hand tighten that all I like and it feels nice and strong. And then as soon as you put cake on, it swings around. So make sure you've got two wrenches, okay? And you're going to open it up. You're going to wrench one side that way and you're going to get underneath and wrench the other one the other way. Okay, and you're going to twist that right and you're going to twist it until it, it really won't move and then you've got a solid base otherwise you'd be amazed how quickly these things work for you okay so then i put this one on because it takes forever to get this down so i put this one on now then on to your boards so we know we need a base piece here and you need a neck piece here so this is our base piece uh, Okay, 12 mil MDF. Um, I've gone for a point at the front and then slightly wider at the back. If you ever decapitated a horse, which I don't advise you do, you'd get this kind of shape like that where you get a point at the front going to a wider piece at the back. Okay, and then we've got our 10 mil drill hole there. There's your drill. That's a 10 mil, 10 mil drill bit running on there. Now, here's what I wanted to show you with it. If you try and drill a hole through there, you're only going to be able to put it on the rod flat. Now, if you look at our picture, it's quite clearly at that angle. Yeah, if I show you there. Mm -hmm. It's running like that. So we cannot drill a hole straight through. We have to drill our hole at the angle that the rod's gonna come through. And I'm telling you that because I guarantee when you do this, you'll drill a hole through flat and then get really annoyed that you can't get it to come on that angle, okay? So you need to drill it through at the angle that you're meaning to secure it. I just hold it on the table like that and drill through. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to put that on there. But your nut is straight. This is where these guys come in. This is something new. Didn't use these last week. Um, this is plumber's pipe. 
Um, it said on it, on the my, my bigger piece which is out there, that it's 21.5 mils plumber's pipe. Dead easy to cut through, cut through it with a jig. And what I've done is the bottom is flat because that's going to get there. And then the top has got the same angle on it as how I want my board. Like that. Yeah, everyone's still with me? Are you still with me? You let me know. Let me know if I, um, I'm, you're still there and I'm not talking to myself. Yeah. All we're going to do is we're going to pop that over there. Okay, and then that nut will just sit down into it. Now then, now we've done that, just get that nut down. I moved it too far up. Okay, we can then slide, yeah, washer first. Oh, the washer on. Hi Tammy! Watching from Plymouth. Hi Keely. Right, okay, so that will now slide on there. Do you see it sits at the angle? because you've drilled your hole at the angle, okay, got it? And then your plumber's pipe is going to support it at that angle. So that is not going anywhere now, that is going to stay at that angle. That's how you start creating angle things. So you guys who have been asking about um, topsy-turvy cakes and how to get the angles, the answer is plumber's pipe over threaded rod. We're going to pop that one on this will take me a minute to so just chat amongst yourself. Ooh, no, we need to put the washer on first. Always put your washer in your nut. If you don't, the nut just digs deeper and deeper into the MDF and it will start swinging about. That, like that. Bosh. That's going to go on there. Oh, this takes ages. We've got any questions so far? Always love a power tool for building cakes. Yes, if it doesn't start in B&Q, it's not a real cake. Yeah. But don't get your hubbies to do it, or your fellas to do it, or the neighbour or anything. Like, roll your sleeves up and crack on with it. Because it's just it's just a fear barrier, like everything with this. It's just a fear barrier. And actually, once you get going, there's no worries at all. And then once you get used to the tools, then you can just do what you want when you want. You're not relying on somebody else, or you're not having to sweet talk anybody else, or whatever. I know I'm a bit of a hardened, independent soul, but... Um, get your own tools and then nobody can tell you I've not had to build a frame yet thinking I'm going to be hunting out the power tools and get to Wix when it opens yep um, you can do click and collect you don't have to wait till it opens uh, all the major stores now are doing click and collect so you can just swing on by and get some um, I advise if you can get them in pink your fellas aren't going to steal them uh, which I quite like right there's the first one. Second one this is our headpiece Okay, now as you've learned already, we need that to go at an angle. So if we need that to go at an angle, we're going to need another one of these, which is cut to the angle. Now this one, this needs two cuts. But the good news is, when you cut that one, it created the bottom of this one, so your angle's already there. And then you match the angle at the top. So we're going to slide that one on top of that one, like that. Uh, actually, it's probably easier to put the nut on first. Question is, who's stolen my washers? Mm. I don't. Um, so I'll I'll pop the second nut on first to get that down there. Spend my life doing this. Look, Blue Peter style. I put spares up there. Um, let me just have a look. That's about right. Um, and then that goes on there. A giant jigsaw, isn't it? And then again, remember your head is drilled uh, that way around. No, nope, that way around. Your head is drilled at an angle. Again, if you drill it flat, you're going to end up with a flat head, and then you can't do anything with it. You've got to drill it through at that angle there. So, I'll put my nut on. Um, I can put. I can put that on there. Gosh. Another one of those on there, and I can put that on there. Now, one thing I didn't do, and you would need to do, is each time you're doing one of these, um, get your get your wrenches to them and really lock them off. Okay, really, really lock them off, because otherwise they'll spin around. Um, but I'm just trying to show you quickly. Now, this one, I've just done it slightly easier for you guys. The head. Um, you need to lock that off, but you get the idea. I'm, I've done the head in the same angle as the body. That is because it is much easier to put cake going and then up 
than it is on the one I did because I was playing tricks um, because I like pushing things as far as I can for some unknown reason but it amuses me. My one, which I can kind of show you, but you'd need to t you'd need to cut your board, you'd need to cut your rod differently. This plastic, my one has cords. The difficult thing about that is then you have to cake round a curve a bit like a spiral staircase. Okay, you have to go da -da 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 all the way up here. Whereas if you want to keep it marginally easier for yourself, keep your head facing the same way as your body because then at least you just have to put your cake up here and you're naturally coming on to the neck point and the head point. As soon as you start turning it, you've got to come right round a corner and then curve in up round the neck. Um, but it depends how much punishment you like putting yourself through, really, isn't it? So there we go, so that's going to cut that out. So can I just talk to you about this head? I just want to unscrew it so I can see you. Uh, if you're going to play horses, I just want you guys to see... Off it comes. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, How narrow that nose is. Okay, I won't go into too much detail about horses because it's a whole different game and a whole different course. But um, if I'm going to teach you this, you've, you've got to keep that narrow, that nose narrow. Horses have got really, really narrow noses. If you, if you think about this shape, you might be tempted to have it much wider here. Much wider here. You end up with some sort of donkey cow kind of thing. And you, um, you don't want that at all. That's how you get the sort of the big cartoony faces. And remember, your board always has to be your smallest point. So if you make your board a bit too small, you can cake it wider. But if you make it really wide at this point, by the time you put the cake on and the icing, you end up with a sort of like cow face on the front of things. So that's my only warning here. Um, we can go into other things about um, sculpting at a different time. We'll just keep this destructive. But make sure your board goes to a really narrow point if you're doing a horse, okay? Um, and then at the back, this is the end. So his head actually ends there. This is his neck and his mane. I've just given that a point so that the mane's got something to sit on otherwise if you only did a head to here the amount of weight you've got coming down that drop is too much so, so extend your head off the back here yeah okay um there we go a little 101 about horses so that if you guys start doing this you don't end up sending me lots of pictures of um weird horse cows uh, work that on work that on there and we'll work that on there okay so obviously you guys will be tightening this off you really have to lock it off. If it feels hand tight, that's no good. You have to get wrenches to it because once you put the weight of the cake on, stuff starts spinning around and you don't want that. Um, okay, I showed you these last week, but it's worth showing you again. Um, let's just check that's going on. Stuart cuts the rods for me. Drill set was my Christmas present. Heidi, start cutting your own rods. It's so fun. The sparks go everywhere and your kids think you're amazing. Um, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. This is, uh, these are bubble tea straws. I talked about them last week, but honestly, they're an absolute godsend. So instead of spending lots of time trying to um, cover rods in tinfoil or whatever, you can just pop these over the top and it's nice and clean. Also, you can't see it. That goes up quite high. So if I'm doing my head and I've discovered that actually my head is taller than my rod, I can essentially just extend the rod by adding a, um, a bubble tea straw, which gives me a much longer dowel. So it's really, really helpful. So if I'm never quite sure whether my rod is long enough, I'll cut it slightly short and then just add a straw in because that gives me all the dowel I need. So you're going to cake, cake here. Now, um, I don't think I talked about this last week. Get your cake level. It's very tempting when you've got an angle like this to try and start stacking cake up like that. But by the time you're up here, it's so unstable, you risk the whole lot coming off the front. So you want a wedge of cake like that, and then you're going to be straight. And once you've got it straight, then you can come up straight. And now again, it's also tempting because you've got this here and because you've got wood here, you don't think you don't need any dowels. Uh, you don't need any dowels, you don't need any boards. That's a huge mistake. This is what, six, six, seven layers of cake? massive massive amounts of cake you're going to end up with it collapsing there's no amount of cake that's going to have that and what it's going to do is it's going to press down and press down you'll get a gap here and you'll start trying to fill it and that'll add more weight and it'll press down and press down so make sure even even though you've got a board here and you've got a dowel here you need to put a normal cake board like you do under the bottom of your tiers about there and put some straws in here really really important people get carried away because they think it's structured and it's got structure to it they, they just lay a cake on top of cake on top of cake and it just reacts exactly the same way i'm just gonna move that slightly uh yeah so that's what you do so you're gonna have a, another board there about halfway up this head is only going to be about that big so you, you can get away with it um that leaves this bit here now if you wanted you could play silly buggers with a bit of cake trying to do that 
but honestly, I didn't have any of this last week um, because my eldest son loves nothing better than stealing it and making weird inventions. Um, and I tend to let him because he's being creative. So I got some of the fruits to show you. Personally, can you see that? I just start finding a bit of tin foil. You can see I haven't locked that off. Like you thought that was locked off, but look at it straight away. So you've got to get it locked off. Okay, so a couple of rounds of that is going to create the base underneath. And then all of this is cake and all of that is cake. And I don't think anyone's going to argue with you about that. Um, this structure is much easier than the one last week. Um, so I think I've run out of things to tell you. But if you've got any questions, check out this girl. Yeah, check me out. How do you figure out these shapes and the angles? Um, guesswork, mostly. This one I made up, so it's quite easy to do. You could probably do it if you had a compass. Not a compass, what are they call a protractor. Look, there, put in. But that's what? So that's going to be 90 degrees, so it's half of it. 90, 180, 360, yeah, so that's 45 degrees. So you can you can roughly guess forty five degrees, but honestly, I'm not I'm not very technical. I don't really go down the technical route. Um, I go down the art route. So um, I'm a bit of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of caker. So um, it doesn't really bother me if it was up like that. It wouldn't really bother me as long as it's got an angle on it. I'm not really fussed. So I just hold it and eyeball it and, and put the drill through in that way. Um, but you could you could measure it. You could on on your drawing. You could very easily very easily get a um, protractor in there and. Um, you know, start measuring angles and things if you wanted to. That's not really my style. Um, it makes me all itchy to even think about like getting rulers out and stuff, but um, that might be your style. So um, always go with what works for you. Never rely on what works for me. It's a disaster to try and be someone else. You have to be yourself. Um, yeah, so put an angle through there. There is a point apparently uh, where Kate will slide. That isn't it. <laughs> I've yet to find where it is. I'm sure I will one day. But apparently, if you get too steep, there's a point where cake will slide. But if you're using ganache and things, the cake will sit on this quite happily all day. Uh, let me have a look. Thanks, Jane. Did you build the cake on the first board and then at the top board when you get to that point? With this one, probably not, because you've got quite good access to it. What you mean, like slide it down, just slide it down over the top. You could do... Um, but actually, if you look at it, it backs up to your rod really quickly. So you're only going to have the smallest amount of cake here. So I probably just put a bit of cake there and then stack up the back. And this is just right into his neck. If you look on the if you look on the picture, it's right into his neck. So there is no cake here. This is where the rod is. Comes down like that. So there's a small amount of cake on the front. Some of them, if I've got the mod, rod more in the centre and I'm stacking on top, then yes. But if you get bigger and bigger and bigger, then you can't actually start doing that because you wouldn't be able to take this off and then put it back on. So I'd probably just cut a wedge um, if I needed to, cut a wedge out and then wedge it in and then come up. So on this one, no, probably not. Uh, I had a disaster with Rice Krispie Treats. So, so tin four from now on, Karen, I think Rice Krispie Treats are evil. Uh, I think they are the devil's works, closely, closely followed by cake pops. So no. Uh, do we get to see you carve it? Not this time. I, it, it, I, you'd have to sit here for about six hours and you'd get a numb bum and I'd need a wee. Uh, but I'm working on it. I'm working on how to convert this stuff. This is only my second live, so um, it's all very new to me and I'm, I'm working on how to uh, make it. So perhaps I could do a full one, but that would take a long time and I've got three little kidlets who are trying to get in the door right now, so um, I have to work that out. But bear with me. Uh, hanging with me and over time I'll work out how to do more and more and then I'll work out how to do like maybe we could do it week by week a bit of sculpting and then a, and, and slowly build it up but just bear with me whilst I work that out um, great I get it now I need to find some plumbing pipe yes you do do you need to cover the boards in tin for absolutely yes you need sorry I was I took that as a given uh, silly girl um, all of this stuff then needs to be covered um, and we spoke about this last week but I'll, I'll talk about it again if you're going to cover, your temptation is to cover like that. But then, can you see that? Then your foil will constantly fall down. No matter what you do, it will always fall down. So, to make sure if you're going to cover, you cover from the bottom up. And that way, all the weight of your cake is going to pin that tin foil in place, okay? You're not going to end up with bits of it falling down all the time. 
So always cover from the bottom upwards and then the weight of your kit comes on there. Every single piece of this has to be covered, um, even your rods, nuts, bolts. I use tin foil because you can see it. My fear with cling film is that when they cut into it, they're going to end up eating cling film without realising. Um, Jane said last week you can get amazing sticky tin foil. Um, I know a lot of people who just ganache them completely. And then you, you cover them in ganache and then technically they're food safe. But I also know I've got three kids who are then trying to eat a structure. So um, tin foil is my go-to. I've never had anyone um, worry about it. And it's, it's nice and safe. So that's what I use. But there's various things. But yeah, completely cover it. And your base as well. Lots of people don't cover their base. If you don't cover your base and then all your ganache falls off, as soon as you scrape that ganache to put it back on, you're then putting MDF dust ganache on. So... Before you do anything, any building or ganache or anything, um, cover your base so then, then you're not wasting your ganache, you can put it back on. Um, what else? Thanks, Tammy. Oh, thanks, Deborah. I feel your kid, <laughs> my kid look pain. Yeah, yeah. Yes, hubby's in there uh, with them, but they still walk to the door to get a drink. Uh, yeah, they're doing much better this week. Last week it was chaos, wasn't it? And hubby was sneezing. Um, so I don't know if there's any more questions. If you want to, if I've not answered your question, do you want to shout now? Because it will come up um, and I can see them. I don't know if I can scroll these back down. Um, if not, it's quite a nice little structure, this one. So obviously from here you can build off your unicorns. Aluminium tape, yep, that's another one. Um, there's all sorts of things. I'm a bit of a tight ass. So I don't like spending money um, on things. And also, I, 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 I work a bit last minute, so the chance of me having these things in advance is quite slim. But, um, yeah, I have tinfoil around all the time. But there are there's loads and loads of ways to effectively cover it. Please do, though, even if you're just a hobby baker, it's not nice to poison people with MDF dust. So uh, if you're getting into this, take it seriously. Is there any more questions? Um... What do you, do you guys want to do one? I remember being a power ranger. <laughs> Denise did my kids party, bless her. Um, are there any more questions or um, do you want to know uh, what structures next week? Have a think about what you want to do next week. I thought I might do something even simpler this week because last week's was crazy advanced. This one's still pretty advanced. You've still got to like, you know, cut rods. So next week I thought I might do something really simple so those guys who have never done anything feel like they can get their, their dip their toes in the water. So um, I'll look at that uh, if that's cool. Okay, right, I'm going to go and let you guys have a, a good Easter weekend, spend some time with your families, and I will see you next week. All right, take care, everyone. Bye.